Great. So, as I mentioned, today we are starting user interfaces and we will be looking at today the dip different types of interfaces that a computer or some sort of device can have so that we can input data. So these interfaces are what we use to interact with our device, whether it's a computer, a laptop, um, or any other electronic device. They may have one or more of these kinds of interface and that's how we interact with it. That is how we input data into that device. So to get us started, we'd like a reader for the first paragraph. Let's see, Varshini, you can read for us. User interfaces are found, are found wherever digital technology exists. How you interact with and use this technology is controlled by the computer user interface, also known as the human computer interface, HCI. A user interface involves various ways of capturing or transferring data between a user and a computer system. The interface, therefore, can be graphical, text-based, or even audio-video-based, depending on the application, meaning that, meaning that it can be a hardware interface, software interface, or a combination of both. Very good. So, as I mentioned, the interface is what you will be using to interact with the device so the reason why i'm using the term device is because the interface is it will not be only for a computer so by using the term device i'm covering all of the other electronic devices that makes use of an interface a smartphone um a computer system that is used inside of a restaurant for example when you go to churches that screen that they are using to input data that has an interface um, a traffic light system has an interface a printer has an interface so different devices have different interfaces and that's what we'll be looking at today what are the differences between each interface and what makes one basically more beneficial than the other, why would we use one instead of the other? Now, as the paragraph mentioned, the interface involves various ways of capturing or transferring data between a user and the computer system. So, it's basically used for inputting. Therefore, the interface can either be graphical which is an example of the computer or the phone or the tablet you're using right now it can be text based audio video base it all depends on what kind of system you have in place and what is the need for that system so it can either be one kind of interface or it can be a combination of interface so let's have the reading of the other part now um, Suraj Budan <coughs> Suraj Suraj I love the meeting Saskia? Since a user interface helps the user to interact with the system, it should have an attractive design, be simple to use, have a quick response system, have instructions that are easy to understand, 
have a consistent layout if there are multiple screens. Very good. So, for an interface to be basically um, easy to use or one that we can easily understand, we need to follow these points. So, for if there is any IT persons here, if you're interested in, say for example, developing software, then these points might be useful for you to remember. When you're developing an interface, it needs to be attractive. So, obviously, if something is not attractive, you will not go after it. So, you will not pay any attention to it. So, for example, when they say attractive, they mean like how in Windows you can have different colors, different shapes, and basically you can change the design however you see fit. So that is one way you can make it attractive. Now, other than being attractive, it needs to also be simple. So when it needs, um, what it means by being simple is that as you go about using it, you can easily see or know what this option does. So for example, if there is a button, you can easily see that this button does this action. So basically when you see the interface, you don't have to read a manual. You don't have to ask anyone, how do I use this interface? It should be simple to use. The third point is to have a quick response time. So when you use an option on the interface, it should give you a response um, almost immediately, if it can. In some cases, um, if it's gonna take a while to process data, then you might want to set it up in such a way that it tells you that please wait. So like for those, um, for instance, um, for those of you who play a game, if you are if you're now entering the game, you would notice that instead of just seeing a blank screen as the game is loading, you actually see um, basically a screen telling you that please wait or in some cases that it is loading so that you have some sort of response from the system. That way now you don't feel boring. You actually enjoy seeing the load screen as it go across. So especially those that make an attractive load screen, that all of that leads to having a more user-friendly or effective interface. The fourth point is have instructions that are easy to understand. This would go in line with being simple to use. So you need to be clear an interface that is effective needs to be clear as to what each option on the interface is doing so that any person is using it will be able to know what action will be carried out when I use this option or when I press this button or so on. The last point is to have a consistent layout if there are multiple screens. So for example, we can say with, for example, the window setting. If you click on another option, it can basically have like the same design, the same layout throughout the interface. So this is also an example of an interface. All of these options that you have here that you click on, so by having the same design, wherever you go, it makes it simple to use. So all of these can lead to having a more effective interface when you follow these points here. Being attractive, being simple to use, having quick response, um, instructions being clear to understand, and having a consistent layout. Okay, so 
that's the basic for a interface and now we'll be looking at the different types of interface so the first type of interface is the hardware interface and Suraj let's see if you can try again hardware interfaces hardware interfaces such as touchscreen sensors digital cameras and special keyboards keyboards sorry are input devices that were discussed earlier in the chapter an example of a hardware device with a user interface is a game controller. The layout of the button, touchpad, joysticks, and hand grips together form the user interface that carries out the various functions. Very good. So, as we would have looked at in our first classes, when we hear the word hardware, we think of the physical parts of a computer. Or we can also say the physical parts of a device. So um, parts such as a touch screen, for those of you who are using a phone, the touch screen or the or a tablet, the touch screen is a hardware interface. It is something physical that you have to interact with. A sensor, um, for example, maybe an iris scanner, for those of you who have that on your phone, it's something you have to interact with. A digital camera, a keyboard, they're all physical devices that we have to interact with so that they can accept the data. And a very common hardware interface, most of you would know, is a controller. Now. A controller is also a keyboard, but it is considered a special keyboard because you are designing, the person is designing, the developer is designing the keys in a different pattern than a regular keyboard that you would type on your computer. So here's a question. Do you guys think the keyboard on your computer that you have right now, is that a hardware interface? Yes, sir. Yes, that's correct. It is a hardware interface. So basically, because remember, the definition that we have at the top here for interface, it involves various ways of capturing or transferring data, which if you think about it, is basically inputting data. So a normal keyboard that you have connected to your computer is considered a hardware interface so this special keyboard this joystick here this game controller the layout of the buttons the touchpad the joystick the hand grip they all form, form together to have a user interface so that whichever button you um, press will have some sort of action inside of the game that you are playing. So, in a nutshell, the hardware interface, when you hear the term hardware, you think of the physical devices that you have connected. And once you're interacting with that physical device to capture data or transfer data or input data, then you are basically um, that is basically a hardware interface. What about um, a TV remote? What do you guys say? A hardware or not hardware interface? Hardware. Good. So can you think of any other example? What would be another example? Another common example? A mouse. A mouse. Very good. Because you have to move the mouse so that the cursor on the screen moves. When you right click, something happens. Very good. Anything else? Anyone with anything? any other idea?
All right. So you guys should have the idea by now of what a hardware interface is. So the next one is the next kind of interface is the software interface. And Ryan, you can read for us. Software interfaces. Software interfaces are available after the computer has booted up and the operating system has been loaded, allowing the user to interact with the computer or device through an interface. Software interfaces include online forms for data entry, dialogue interfaces such as navigational systems in some vehicles, and Amazon's Alexa and their talking Echo speaker units. There are four main types of software interface, command line interface, menu driven interface, and gr a graphic user interface, a GUI. Very good. So note that you get a software interface when the device has booted up. And when you have your operating system loaded, and you can basically interact with that device, then that is the interface. So all of these buttons here, all of these programs, all of these options that you see in here, these are all software interface that you can interact with your operating system, you can interact with your computer and do options. Now, Other examples of software interface can include online forms. So like how you have your Google form by just selecting, um, by just checking a box, that is an interface to answer a question. We also have dialogue interface such as navigational systems in some vehicles so that you just basically have to maybe press an option and the software recognizes that input and carries out the necessary action so even your smartphone also because remember your smartphone your tablet they all have an operating system and to interact with it you have that software interface underneath it so that you can perform certain actions on your phone. Now remember, we said that a device can be hardware, it can be software, or it can be a combination of both. So with what I just said there, what would you say a smartphone is? Is it hardware interface only? Is it software interface only? Or is it a combination of both hardware and software? What do you guys think? So I think it's a combination. Combination? Kizia, what do you think? Sir, I think it's software. Software. Liana, one more opinion. Liana Benons. Morano, what do you think? Apparently no one is thinking this morning. Pamela? Uh, forgive me this, sir. My mic is giving me a bit trouble. Okay, what do you think? Software, hardware, boat? Boat. Boat? Okay. Sir, boat. Boat is correct because remember hardware is the physical part and the physical part can include a touch screen. Your smartphone has a touch screen. 
and that is how you are interacting with the software part of your smartphone so the software is what the the hardware part now recognizes the touch and wherever you're touching on your phone it will send that input to the operating system telling it that it touched at this point of the phone and the software now will know that at this point um, a game icon was there and that meant that you want to launch that game icon so it's a combination of hardware and software Give me a second. All right, so The paragraph is saying there's four main types of software interface, but they only have three mentioned here, command line, menu driven, graphical, and I'm not seeing the mention in the fourth one, or maybe that's a typo. Anyway, when we go along, we shall see. Command line interface. Remember these fall under your software interface. So this is a type of software interface, command line. Let's have Robert. Command line interface. Command line interface requires you to type in commands using special language. This special, this special language makes command line interface difficult to use, especially for new computer users. In recent versions of Windows, it's called Windows PowerShell. Very good. Give me a second, let me check and see. So, a command line interface, as the paragraph mentions, it uses a special language. The computer will recognize that special language and that is how you are interacting with that computer basically it doesn't mention it here but a command line interface is text only so you're only seeing letters you're only seeing words you're only seeing symbols and so on nothing um, no pictures no videos, nothing. Only a specific language that has certain text and so on. So I think some of you should be familiar with um, the command prompt. This here is an example of a command line interface. In this interface now, how you interact with a command line interface is by putting in typing the language of the command line so for the command prompt there are certain commands that you can run and depending on the command or the language the word for that language that you run different actions will be carried out So as you can see here, I am only entering text into the command line. There is no images, there is no audio, there is no video. And that is how some computers are being operated. So if you remember for the system software that we looked at, one example, two examples of system software that I gave were Linux and Unix 
And those two operating systems actually use a command line interface. There is no um, like all for Windows here. We have all of these fancy shapes and colors and icons and so on. For Linux and Unix, they try to mostly use um, a command line interface. That's not saying they don't have, so basically this interface that you're seeing here is called a graphical user interface. We'll be looking at that just now. Windows is a graphical user interface and Linux and Unix, they have graphical user interface, but when a, more, when a company is using those operating systems, Linux and Unix, they use them only with a command line interface, which is an interface like this here, so that you just, you're just entering text into the computer. And that is how you are interacting with that computer. Uh, the next interface is a menu driven interface and you're going to have the reading for the first paragraph. Um, Pamela, you can read for us. Menu driven interface. A menu is a list of options from which you can choose what you want to do. Application programs use menus as an easy alternative to running program commands. Menu-driven interfaces or a developed type make the interface friendlier and easier to program. You can control a computer by choosing commands and available options from a menu. Using the keys and a keyboard are mouse. For example, depending on your choice, another set of options may appear on the screen for you to make another choice. This continues until you reach your final solution. Very good. So, as you can see in the image here, this is an example of a menu interface. So, imagine now, if you go back to the command line interface here, if you were to use a computer like this here, would you enjoy using your computer like this? Would anyone of you enjoy that? No, sir. It will, it will be kind of hard to use a computer like this, right? Because you won't be entertained, you won't be, you won't feel as comfortable as you would when you're using Windows. So, this is actually how computers started off. They started off with a command line interface. And then, to make it more user friendly, or make a person be able to enjoy using a computer more, they have developed a menu driven interface or a menu based interface, whereby you have different options that you can click on that will give either give you more options or take you to whatever action you need to carry out. So if we go back to settings, this is also a menu based interface if you think about it because you're just clicking on options until you get to your destination. So a menu based interface has options in the forms of boxes or icons you can see and you click with your mouse or you can interact with it with your keyboard and you basically select you keep selecting the option that you want until you reach your destination or what action you want to be carried out the last paragraph um, Morano Yes, sir. Uh, give me a second. Let me just. Uh, I can dress it. Uh, wait. And. Let me zoom in. And I can is no. Sir, wait. Menu driven. Uh, it, not Anyways, menu driven interface can also be verbal rather than visual. An example is an automatic answering service. 
when you press one on the keypad for a department, two for another department, and zero for the operator. This interface can easy. These interface can be easy to follow, but can become confusing as the number of the menu options increase, and you need to in and you need to retrace your previous option. Good. So it's saying here that a menu interface can also be verbal or it can also be audio based. So instead of being visual, so like how if you go back to settings, this is basically a visual interface. But in some situations, you might want it to be audio based also or verbal so that in those cases when you select this option here you basically hear what option you would have selected so they give the example of a answering service if you press one then you might hear back what department is for one if you press two you would hear what department is for two if you press zero, they will tell you that it's going to the operator. So it's the same menu based interface. You still have the menus, the shapes, the icons with the options. But instead of seeing something visual, you can also hear what are the options. So for example, when I click on the system, instead of seeing all these options, I could see I could hear um, Option one, display. Option two, sound. Option three, notifications and actions. So that would be an example of a menu-based interface with a verbal or a audio interaction. Now, note that we can combine all of these interfaces together. So it's not a case where we can only use one. So it can. The menu interface can still be a combination of a verbal or audio and a visual. So I think um, Windows also has the option. So um, even your phone has the option that if you select one of these options here, it would read it back to you. So I think that is, um, I forgot what you call it. Yeah, narrator. So. Yes, sir, the narrator. By selecting the option, if I had selected display, it would have told me that it would have said display. If I selected mouse pointer, it would have said mouse pointer and so on. So most of these interfaces, it all depends on what the need is and you can use a combination of them. It, all, it just all depends on what you are, what the person is developing. Now, the most common type of interface is the graphical user interface. And most of you are accustomed to this interface because Windows has it, your phone has it, your tablet has it, and it's the most easiest interface to use. That's why it's so common. So let's look at the graphical interface now, Liana. Is Liana Wick? Can I read? Crystal Dan, I'll come. I'll come to you when I need you. Crystal Dan. Kizia Wilson. At this rate, we might have to go into lunch. Jonathan. 
graphical user interfaces. All computers are now supplied with a graphical user interface, GUI, installed because it is presently regarded as the type of user interface which is easiest to use. The main features of a GUI include its ease of, ease, ease of use for beginners and agility to cut and paste or drag and drop data and files among applications. However, GUIs require a lot of memory, which can slow processing time. Sometimes simple tasks take longer than necessary because of the number of functions or steps required. A GUI comprises windows, icons, menus, and pointers, also called WIMP, W-I-M-P. Figure 1.29 shows an example of a GUI with icons and menus on the computer desktop. All right, so most of you should be familiar with this graphical user interface, Windows. Now, as I mentioned, Windows is the easiest to use. And that is why small children can use it. Anyone can basically make use of it without having anyone guide them as to how to use this kind of interface. Now, the disadvantage you can see with a graphical user interface is that it requires a lot of memory, which can slow down the action that is being carried out, or it can even slow down the device. So, all of these actions of clicking on these menus and being able to drag and drop and cut and paste and all of that, all of that is a part of the graphical user interface. And because it has to do so much action or so much tasks, it requires all of this to be loaded into memory. If you guys can remember when we looked at memory, it requires all of this to be loaded into memory. And if your computer does not have enough memory, if it fills up that memory, then your computer can basically start slowing down. So you can see it as a disadvantage of the graphical user interface. And the advantage, you can say, because of the opposite with the command line interface, is that a command line interface is much faster. It doesn't have to process all of these graphical parts of the interface. Because it's only handling text, it can process the data much faster. So that's an advantage of the command line interface. Now, a graphical user interface is made up of windows, icons, menus, and pointers. So let's look at each part of the graphical user interface now. The first part is the windows. Um, Emily Mangro. Windows. A window is a part of the screen that holds its own document or message. Most computers now use window-based programs. A window can take up the whole screen or can be resized, move or shrunk, minimized. Each time you open a folder, you see its contents in a new window. More than one window can be open at a time. This is particularly useful if you want to move from one window to another or to copy files from one window to another. Good. So... When they say window, they're referring to basically this box that I'm clicking and dragging. So each um, program or each file or anything that you open, they open in their own window. So this command prompt is, is in its own window. Adobe Reader is in its own window. Settings is in its own window. Each have its own window. Now, this is what makes a graphical user interface so easy to use because you can have two windows open 
like this here and you can easily drag and drop one file over to another window and that's what makes a graphical user interface so easy to use because it's just clicking dragging dropping it's very easy to use but if you look at a command line interface where do you click where do you drag where do you drop you don't know and that's what makes um, a command line um, difficult to use but that is what makes a command line also secure to use and that is why organizations make use of it because a normal person won't know how to use a command line interface so that's what makes it more secure for their business but the everyday person like me and you that goes to school that goes to work we don't need a secure interface we don't need um, we need something easy and simple to use and that is why we have we make use of the graphical user interface which makes interacting with the device much easier and user friendly now the next part of the graphical user interface is the icons um, Amina you can read for us icons an icon is a tiny picture of an object that is displayed on the screen normally you can use the icon in some way for example by using the mouse to double click on an icon of the microsoft excel spreadsheet program you will start the program good so if i click on the start menu here you're seeing all of these are icons here a small picture with a a small square with a icon inside of it for the logo and the name of the program or the application and by just clicking on them i can uh, open that application or program and basically interact with it I mean, I'll just read this last paragraph for us. Things easier for computer users. Instead of having to remember commands, all you have to do is to remember what the icon Icons are not just for programs. There are icons for folders and recycle bin, basket, just drives and printers. Good. So if we compare it now to our command line interface, if I were to say here, if I were to launch a program, I would first need to find the location of the program. And I don't think, let me try it. If I type notepad.exe, yes, it actually launched it. It found it and launched it. So it actually launched the program so in a command line interface you have to remember the name of the program and you also have to remember what is the extension it ended with but with a graphical user interface you just have to remember what the icon looks like everyone knows that um, Adobe Reader looks like something like an A and Excel looks something like this here. Everyone knows that Chrome looks like a ball with different colors. So by just remembering the icon, it makes it much easier for you to interact with the applications or interact with the interface. So for command line interface, you would have had to remember the different words for the language, but a graphical user interface you just have to remember the icons 
now both situation has a disadvantage and advantage um, a command line it is hard to use yes but it is more secure and a graphical user interface it is easier to use but that means it is more um, demanding on your computer it basically takes longer for data to process now the third part of Windows um, a graphical user interface is the menu Akilesh menu an advantage of using menus in windows or on a mac is that for most program first few menus are always in the same order they also carry out the same oh, functions no matter which program you are using for example the file is first is first an image Enable to you among others to create save and document among us. For long menu that are activated by king using left mouse button. Menu pulls down the menu item and you can scroll down to various items. More complicated for long menus can produce additional Okay then, thank you. Continue the um, you have to continue. Pop up menu. Pop up menus are activated by. Pop up menus are activated by clicking anywhere on the document screen using the right. Some standard commands and options are available on those menus, including the cut, copy, and paste command. Good. So, the other part of a graphical user interface are the menus. Now, the menus inside of Windows or on a Mac or any kind of software, the first few of them are usually in the same order so these menus would refer to what we have at the top here so if you can see me clicking on file most menus most software have these file menu the edit menu the view menu so if i go to notepad look notepad has the same menu file edit view so and they usually have the same options inside of them. So that's what makes a graphical user interface more user friendly because if you know what is usually inside of the file menu option, then you know what is inside of the other file menu options and you would know how to make use of them. So for example, the file menu it's usually first always first and it will enable you to create a document or to create a file save the file print the file and so on so any software that you click file on you would usually find these options to open a file create a file save the file print the file and so on now there are two types of menus. There are the pull down menu, which is activated by clicking on the menu item, such as file, and using the left mouse button. So by it coming down, that is a pull down menu.
Now the other type of menu is a pop-up menu. And a pop-up menu is activated when you use the right mouse button. So if I right click inside of this document here, anywhere that the menu pops up, when I right click, that is called a pop-up menu. Remember drop down, a pull down comes from one of these options at the top here. And a pop-up, basically as the word indicates, it pops up anywhere that you would right click. So if I right click on my taskbar at the bottom here, I have a pop-up menu here. If I right click on the Windows icon, I have another pop-up menu here. And most pop-up menus would have these common commands, cut, copy, and paste. This does not have it, but in most documents, say for example, Notepad, you have it here, cut, copy, and paste. So Word, Excel, spreadsheet, and so on, they would have those common commands inside of the pop-up menu. Now the last part of the graphical user interface is the pointers. And Varshini, you can read for us. We're not hearing you, Varshini. We'll have somebody else read because you're breaking up. Morano? Pointers, sir? Yes. Okay, we're hearing you now. Yes, pointers. The most common pointing device is a mouse. Mouse is moved. A pointer moves around the screen. The pointer is a very important part of a GUI as it enables you to control the computer and to choose window items, to select text in a document or cells in a spreadsheet, and to create drawings and shapes. Other pointing devices include graphics tablets, joysticks, and digital pens for use with touchscreen devices. Good. So the pointer inside of the graphical user interface is basically what you are using to interact with the other parts of the graphical user interface. So this icon that I have here, that is this cursor that I have here uh, moving all over the place, that is your pointer that you would use to interact with your system. So those are the four parts of your graphical user interface. You have your windows, which are these boxes here that have that contains your application you have the icons which you would use to launch an application or program you have your menus which has two types a pull down which is like at the top here or a pop-up menu which you get when you right click and lastly, a pointer, which you need so that you can interact, easily interact with all the other parts of the graphical user interface. Now, it's not a case that you absolutely need it because you can interact with your computer, with your keyboard, but right um, it's still a case where you can interact with these um, parts of the graphical user interface with your keyboard but it's just that using the pointer makes it more user friendly makes it more simple 
to use. So let's look at the last topic, improving interface. Murano, you want to read this one? Or anyone that is willing to read this one? Someone Improve might have this. Yes. Anyone. Software companies spend a great deal of time and effort trying to improve the interface so that the computer is easy to use. An important part of this is to design the system software and application programs so that they work exactly the same way, way each time they are used and the menus are always in the same place. People use computers for many hours a day. Therefore, the screen design and screen colors must be visually pleasing and soothing. However, some light covers might be impossible for the visually impaired to see. Therefore, therefore, audio hardware interfaces have become useful. Good. So basically, when companies are designing these interfaces, they try to make it as similar as possible. So if you notice, um, for example, applications. Um, for those of you who have an iPhone or for those of you who have an Android phone, you would notice that, um, for example, WhatsApp or Messenger, they might look slightly different on the different um, phones, even though it's the same company. Now, in some cases, they might not be able to make it exactly the same because of the difference in the operating system, the system software because remember it's different system software but they try their best to make it as similar as possible so that way now they make it easy to use on one device and it's also easy to use on another device so that's what one thing a developer would look like, look at when they are developing an interface they try to make it as similar as possible on different devices so that it is easy to use. But as the last paragraph mentioned, not all persons um, are able to see visually um, the different features and options that we might have. So in those cases, we would make use of other interfaces that these persons can perceive, and that would be sound. So it all depends on the situation it all depends on the need of the person and that is the interface a person would make use of. Would they make use of a hardware interface, a software, a combination, um, interface that deals with sound, an interface that deals with menus. It all depends on the need. But you guys now know the difference between each one of the interface. So you can see which would be better for any given situation. Now, once again, these questions will be for your homework. So it should be posted by now. Ensure you complete your homework in time. So in review, an interface it is basically used, as the paragraph mentions here, to capture or transfer data. So there are two kinds of interface, hardware interface, which refers to a physical device that we are using to input or capture data, and a software interface, which has three types or kinds, which includes the command line interface, which is which has which is text-based only. You only deal with a special language. The other kind is a menu-driven interface, which gives you different options that you can select with a mouse or keyboard, like in the image here. And the last one is a graphical user interface, which is basically the easiest to use 
and the most user friendly. The GUI is made up of four parts, the windows, the icons, the menus and the pointers, and all come together to make the graphical user interface more user friendly. Now, before we end, is there anyone with any question on today's topic? Yes or no? No, sir. No? All right, then. I hope you guys all the best for your homework. For those of you who don't have enough scores to study well and up your scores. So if you guys don't have any other questions, you are free to leave. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too, sir.